Hello and welcome to what is likely the final episode of the Planet Zoo Every Animal franchise zoo. It's been a journey, hasn't it? An epic journey full of challenges and frustrations, but also joy. Plenty of joy cramming all these animals into such an eclectic, shall we say, zoo? (laughs) Oh dear, forgive me, I am feeling a slight twinge of nostalgia, just reflecting on how much blood, sweat and tears I've put into this project. To see it reach the end, it's a bit tough to take it all in. All good things do have to come to an end, and the recent release of the Zookeepers Pack Well, now I believe all signs are, unfortunately, pointing to this being the last DLC for Planet Zoo. In turn, that means it's time to put the finishing touches to the Every Animal franchise zoo. Today we're adding the last remaining new animals. Starting us off, we've got a few species that share enrichment with animals already in the zoo, and for some of those that means we don't need a whole new enclosure. That said, the first addition is the African Spurred Tortoise, and they share enrichment with the Dharma Gazelle. Now, Dharma gazelles already in the zoo, but they are also in a habitat here with quite a few other animals. I don't think the tortoises are going to get on well with the others, so we're going to move the Dharma gazelle and the tortoise into a brand new enclosure. Uh, let me just check. Yes, yes, you are a Dharma gazelle. <laughs> I get mixed up with the Dharma gazelles and the others, so just making sure it is a Dharma. The new enclosure, I think, is going to be very similar to this one. I like it. Anyway, that's the first animal from the zookeeper's pack I need to figure something out for. Next up, we've got the cockerel shafak. This was an easy one. It's a lemur. All lemurs are happy to live together, so I can just put them in with the other lemurs. Right, let's see. Where where are the other lemurs? This zoo is way too big now. I get lost looking for my own enclosures. It's ridiculous. Aha, there you are, up at the back. The cursed lemur habitat that started life as a walkthrough enclosure, but we can't have nice things in this game. The stress was way too high. Anyway, here we go. We've got Shafox in here now. I'm undecided on the Shafox right now. Not sure if I like them or not. There's something slightly odd about them, and I don't know whether that's to do how they've been modelled in game or whether they're just like this in real life. Although I do enjoy watching them jump about. Boingy, boingy. They're very boingy boys. Personal opinion aside, they're very happy here in the enclosure with the other lemurs, so we'll leave them to it and we'll take a look at the next animal, and that is the Hamadreus baboon. This is another animal in the zookeeper's pack that I've been able to add straight away. I haven't had to build another enclosure here. Baboons share enrichment with the African elephant. So revisiting one of the early habitats that I made in this zoo, Someone referred to this in one of my latest videos as the Elephant Roundabout. I just love that name. Never thought of it before, but it's so true. It is the Elephant Roundabout. But it's not just elephants anymore. We now have the baboons in here as well. Grey's addition to Planet Zoo always felt like they were missing from the game, so lovely to see them added here. Oh, great, we get a nighttime changeover. (laughs) Way to break the immersion there. And now the lighting's all different because it's early morning. No matter, we've got baboons to look at. Do really love the baboons, very glad we've got these now. In terms of changes to fit them in here, I haven't really had to change that much in the elephant habitat to accommodate the baboons. I mean, obviously they have a climbing need, so there is a big climbing frame in the corner here. The other big change, this used to be all open, but the baboons can escape, so we've now got additional fencing. I was hoping this enclosure would be deep enough where I wouldn't need that. It's a shame to lose the aesthetic of it being open for guests to view straight through. However, that didn't work out. The baboons could get out. So, yep, got to deal with it. Rather have it this way than have to make two separate enclosures. So, that's the baboon. There is one more animal that I've been able to add to an existing habitat. So, let's play the get lost in my own zoo game again. Not as difficult this one, you can spot it a mile off, the huge temple at the back here. You guessed it, making use of the Tekken temple, and I am so glad now that I made this oversized. This was too big, but now we have Marcos in here too. We do have Marcos in here. Oh no, where are they? Um, uh Aha, there you are. It's the male, so impressive hornage there. And oh, Jumpy wanted to get on the rock to show off his pawns. <laughs> yes, we are all impressed. You don't need to show off. 
Just two marcos in here. As a tradition with every animal zoo, I only put in the number of animals that are necessary to meet the social needs. Although, can't see the other one. Right, we're going to have to go searching. Nothing in the sleeping quarters. Are they stuck around the back? Yes, you are around the back. Must be shy. That's our female marco. Also, no sign of the tackins. There are tackins in here. Makes me nervous that there's been an escape when I can't see the animals. Stop hiding. Where are you? Oh, I see them. They're eating. Serves me right for putting the food right at the front there behind some trees. So that's all the animals I've been able to put in without having to create new habitats entirely for them. We do still have a few left and yes, they will need habitat building. And that's going to be interesting because, well, the zoo is looking quite balanced right now. And I obviously didn't think this through because I did know there was at least one more pack coming. And well, this is the only place to fit them in. A positive, at least with this, we've got the Palaces cat to go in and they're from the same general area as the other animals that I've got in this corner. The others, they are going to look a bit out of place. Spectacle Bear, I'll do my best with that. And Tortoise and the Dick Dick. Well, they're just going to have to slot in in this very edge of the zoo. We'll see how we go on with that. Oh, and change of format for this last episode. There isn't a speed build today. I'm aware this video is going to be long enough with me talking about what's new. And also we're going to have something special to end off with. So I'll jump back in when this is ready. I'm back and here we have a sort of combined habitat for the new tortoise, Darmaxel and the Dick Dick. The habitats are really similar, so it works well to join these up. This side is for the tortoises and the Dharma Gazelle. Tried something different here using faux rocks for the barrier and the Dharma Gazelles are also a shy species so had to go with the one-way glass. That's the same with the view into the hard shelter, also one way. Made this habitat a little bigger than it needs to be because the tortoises are going to have lots of baby tortoises. Yes, I'm talking about you. You are a mean breeding machine. Give it six months in here and the number of tortoises will far outweigh the Dharma Gazelles. Bless, you don't know what you're in for agreeing to live with the tortoises. Major trip hazard incoming. Anyway, living next door, it's the next new species. We've got the Kirk's Dick Dick. An almost identical habitat in terms of needs, so that was easy to build. And yeah, Dick Dicks. Oh, they're so sweet. Melts my heart, it really does. Big congratulations to the dev team for nailing this one. Dick Dick's also a shy species, so one-way barriers. And I did put in this side another viewing window, but there's no path here, so they're not going to get bothered by this one. So, happy accident or careful planning on my part. I'll let you decide on that with the mirrored enclosures here. Next, we need to head down this pathway, the longest pathway with nothing on it, but it does eventually get us around to the new palace's cat habitat. Oh, little kitty, who's a tiny predator? You're a tiny predator, aren't you? Yes, you are. Ugh, my timing is impeccable. I managed to record just as night is here again and that's changed the lighting in here. It's all wrong now. No, I think I'm going to wait this out and jump back when we're back to normal lighting again. Well, it's the right time of day, but now it won't stop snowing. To be fair, Palace's cats deal with snowy regions, so this is a happy coincidence, I guess. Can see what the habitat looks like in the snow, and I think it's a bit of an improvement, to be honest. Although tropical build, yeah, not faring quite so well. Anyway, this build, okay, I have cheated a little bit with this one. I've put a lot of time into Planet Zoo recently and my ideas are all starting to blend together. As such, this is a modified version of the starter habitat I've put together for the Palace's Cat, just with a few additions since there's less restrictions in this zoo. Sorry, I'm distracted here. Are those guests holding snowballs? Seriously? Right, pause. Are they snowballs? Oh my gosh, got to check if other guests have this. Nope, turns out this is trash. They're just carrying trash around even though there's a bin right there. Why are they keeping hold of it? Who knows? But that caught me off guard for a minute there. Thought they'd added something to the game that they hadn't told us about. Nope, just trash. Anyway, it's a good point. I'm going to jump skip yet again to try and get us out of the snow because it's doing funny things with the frame rate. 
that's better. Back to sunny weather. The sun's in the right position so we can get back to the tour. This new building, I'd noticed I hadn't put in any food and drink facilities for quite a while. Probably about, I don't know, maybe five or six episodes ago. So did need more facilities down this end of the Zoom. So food, drink and also a toilet. Very important. Ugh, just noticed that rock sticking through the toilet there. That's no good. Have to fix that. Styles on that building, it is quite basic. Even for me, that's quite basic. And basically, I was trying to mimic what I created for the palace's cat here. Like I've mentioned before, though, I am kind of running thin on ideas at the moment because I've played too much Planet Zoo, if that's possible. Which kind of nicely brings us to the next habitat for the spectacle bear. Oops, another mistake. That's supposed to be a bear education board. Never mind, we'll change that later. Anyway, point here is this is another modified version of the starter habitat I've just created for the spectacle bear. I've changed the barrier so it fits more with the layout of where I've put it in this zoo. But apart from that, it's kind of a carbon copy of what I created for the starter habitats. If I had a month to refigure parts of this zoo entirely, then I'm sure I could come up with something better than this. South American bear would work better in another part of the zoo, but I don't have the time or the motivation to be reconfiguring at this stage. So I'm sticking with this. The other new thing I've got this side of the zoo, I finally got another entrance over this way. Right from the outset of this zoo, my idea was to have three entrance points. I knew it was going to be a huge zoo, so the front entrance was never going to be enough to handle all the guest traffic. So this is the third entrance building and it's a copy of the custom entrance I made oh, many episodes ago now, which is on the other side of the Zoom. I am still restricting number of guests coming in right now because my PC cannot handle the 7,000 plus guests that the game wants in here. But if I did have that setting turned off, this entrance would be very useful by this point. So that's everything new. With no promise of more DLC, that's every animal zoo complete. When I started this project, my objective was to see if it was even possible to add every animal in the game into a franchise zoo. Technically, yes, it is possible, but it's beyond difficult. There's so much to manage. I wouldn't recommend trying this. It's just too much. By the end, I did have to make some compromises because whilst possible to play, my PC couldn't cope with running the game and recording footage at the same time. With some tweaks, like not replacing animals when they died off, it is working okay now. And end of the day, I feel like I've done well to see this project through to the very end. I thought a good send off would be to take a final look at what we've accomplished here.
big thank you to everyone who has followed along with the series. This is the longest running series I've ever created on my channel and a big reason for that is I didn't keep going just for me, I did it for you too. There were times I felt like I was done but we just kept swimming and here we are, the end. There is some cleaning up to do, then sometime very soon I'll upload the full zoo to the Steam Workshop for other players to check out themselves. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next series.